New this hour, dramatic new details about the unidentified object shot down by fighter jets just miles off the coast of Alaska yesterday. Unlike the Chinese spy balloon shot down last Saturday, this object demanded more immediate action yesterday. Officials say it was flying much lower at 40,000 feet, making it a dangerous potential threat to civilian aircraft. But now we are learning that U.S. military pilots who approached the craft have given conflicting accounts of what they saw. This new reporting coming in now from CNN national security reporter Natasha Bertrand. Uh, Natasha, so this is interesting. This is kind of unusual that these pilots saw different things and that is sort of I guess adding to the mystery of all this. Yeah not even the pilots apparently were really able to identify what they saw and just to take you back for a sec on Thursday the uh, the U.S. defense officials sent F-35 fighter jets up to try to figure out what this object was that was flying around near Alaska. Those pilots we have learned have given very conflicting accounts of what they actually experienced with some pilots saying that the, the object interfered with the plane sensors other pilots saying that they didn't really experience that other pilots saying that when they looked at the object, they could identify no identifiable uh, identifiable propulsion system, and they did not know how it was actually staying in the air, cruising at that altitude of about 40,000 feet. So this has all added to the Pentagon's wariness of describing in more detail what this object actually is until they can get more information uh, through the debris that they are recovering right now. And what do we know about the efforts to recover uh, the wreckage of this second object? It looks like NORAD just put out an email a short time ago and it sounds like they're trying to recover it. They did. And what we were told yesterday is that the object was shot down over frozen water. So it landed on the ice, essentially. We don't know what kind of condition it's in, whether it is intact, for example. But recovery efforts have been launched. And according to the Defense Department, they have been able to recover a significant amount of debris. Now, notably, they still don't know what this object is, where it came from, or even uh, what direction it was headed in or wh what direction it came from. It is just all very murky at this point. But they do say that the FBI is going to be taking the lead on analyzing the debris. If that sounds familiar, it's because just last week we saw that another uh, Chinese spy balloon, another, uh, I should say, a Chinese spy balloon, because we don't know what this one actually is, right. was shot down, also being analyzed by the FBI. But right now, there are just so many more questions than answers, Jim. Yeah, and as the hours go on, uh, it gets more and more mysterious. All right, Natasha Bertrand, thank you very much. Let's bring in former CIA operative Bob Baer. Uh, Bob, I mean, this is starting to sound like something out of the X-Files. Uh, I don't want to get carried away here, but uh, what do you make of these uh, different assessments coming in from the pilots of what they saw? Well, Jim, the speed of those airplanes, F-35s, it's no wonder they all saw, saw different things. And as far as intercepting communications to that vehicle, it, it's very difficult. I don't want to get too technical, but it could be you know, frequency hopping, you know, the propulsion, it just, there's so many questions out there that you're absolutely right, not until they actually go through the debris and see what the, what it's made of and what it looks like in the communications. Obviously there was some sort of propulsion system that was driving that, that vehicle. And don't forget NORAD with Doppler radar is probably going back and looking at where it came from and see if they can track it back to, I don't know, China, Russia, wherever. But it is a, it's a great mystery. I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by this. Yeah, I mean, one U.S. official tells us there was no obvious surveillance equipment on board. I, you know, some of this is the initial information, initial reporting that comes in. And I suppose things change as they assess what they have on the ground or on the ice there. Um, what does that tell you if, if that is if that ends up being the case? Well, there's a couple of things that I take away from this. And if it's a foreign made object and it was sent from a place like China or Russia, it's some sort of provocation against us. I can't imagine a vehicle like this would give the Chinese or the Russians a real intelligence advantage of collecting photographs or signals or things like that. But I think what bothers NORAD and the White House is these, these probes. We now know there was, what, a total of five balloons, Chinese balloons that have come over the United States. Why are the Chinese doing this? Who's ordering it? And why would you do it right before Blinken, the Secretary of State, is on his way to Beijing? That makes no sense to me. Uh, is the, you know, a court, with the balloon, is it 
was the Chinese military did struck out on its own. So all of these questions, analysts at the CIA and the White House are looking through this and trying to piece this together. Remember, there's these balloons are flying over 40 places a, a, across across the world, these Chinese balloons. And there are a lot of aerial vehicles I've been involved in before. We've never been able to identify um, from radar. I, one we saw, I remember I was involved in, was going Mach 6, which made no sense at all to anybody. And eventually wow. it was just shelved and couldn't figure it out. Wow. And I guess, you know, the, the question that uh, you're leading me to with uh, the comments on China is that we, we have one or of two situations, I suppose. One is um, they're just trying to provoke the U.S. to see what the response might be. The other would be uh, that she and, and the military might not be on the same page, that uh, the folks who, who want to try to conduct uh, di diplomacy with the United States are not on the same page as the military. Could that be it? Exactly. The People's Liberation Army is very, Army is very difficult to understand. And would they uh, act in, in, in non-accordance with, with Xi? We don't know. I mean, is China close to some sort of military takeover with, with all these COVID protocols that close down the economy? These are very hard questions to answer. And for American intelligence, getting inside these circles is nearly impossible. It's always been impossible. Um, but it's certainly something the analysts are, are picking through right now.